Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Jared from DIY with Confidence. In reply to my last video where I explored the new Snapmaker 2 filtration system, I got a reply from uh, Cursed Dragon 129. In Who are you? Wow, not sure if it was because of the microphone placement or quality, but that seemed incredibly loud. Yes, my friend, um, I will admit the filtration system is incredibly loud. Now, incredible is a relative term, so let's see if we can make it more specific. Let's measure the decibel levels put out by the new filtration system. The purpose of this video, though, is to demonstrate to you how to lower the decibel level of your power module. That one we can control for sure. So let's take a look and see if we can make some changes. Let's begin by firing up the Snapmaker power module and see how much noise this is actually making. My air canals are very sensitive. This noise is being made by the little fan in the back. Right here, that's cooling off this whole unit. This whole case is made with anodized aluminum, so it does a good job dissipating the heat anyway, but this guy's gotta change. Something's gotta happen, because that is really loud. Let's see how loud it is. The decibels that the Snapmaker 2 power module are putting out are somewhere around a household vacuum. But nobody wants a vacuum running in their house for six to 20 hours plus while you're working on a project. Is there something we can do to lower that decibel level to make it less grating on our nerves? Before I start disassembling my Snapmaker power module, will you please take just a second to like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all these things. Here's what you're gonna to need to decrease the sound on your Snapmaker power module. First, you're gonna use this really handy dandy cool tool that the Snapmaker uh, sent with the product, and you're going to use the smallest hex attachment first. Then you're also gonna need, just a second, the Winson high quality factory outlet hydraulic bearing fan. I got this on Amazon and I'll put the link down below. In addition, if you do any DIY projects, you might find it helpful to have these terminal removal tools that you can also get on Amazon for about, well, under $10. I'll put a link for these in the bottom too. Make sure you put these little tiny screws in a safe place so you don't lose them. Then we'll simply remove this outer plate. And that's where you're going to see that the fan is attached. I'm gonna reach inside here and remove this pin head. It does have a little lip that you have to press in order to release it. That's the tricky part, there it is. Now I'm moving up to the second size hex head and I'm going to remove the fan. And again, keep these screws. And on the back, of course, you're going to see this uh, nut that's going to use to, to tighten this on. So make sure you keep the nut and the bolt. There's the old one. And it also has this screen that serves as a filtration system to kind of catch any large debris. Warning, caution, caution, pay attention. This is really important. As you compare the two fans, you're going to notice a really important difference. And it is this, the terminal plug, this is the part that locks in on the top and you'll notice the two little dimples on the bottom. I have a dimple on this side, but not on this side. Dimple, no dimple, dimple, no. It can only go in one way. It can only plug in this way. You can't rotate it and flip it that way because it locks and plugs in one direction. So please notice this. The way that it plugs in, black is on the right, red is on the left. As I look at plugging this one in, same direction, red is on the right, black is on the left. That's really important. If I plug this replacement fan in the way it stands, uh, I'll have a problem because I'm crossing the terminals and it can actually cause damage to your machine. So please pay attention. We've got to flip these around. We're gonna push that down so that it clears the lip. There we go. And then we can push it forward. We're gonna push it down so it clears the lip and then we can push it forward. So this is what we're aiming for. You'll see this little tiny lip up on top that needs to be pushed down in order to slide past the plastic that's holding it in. Be careful not to stick the probe in this bottom part, which is the, the part that receives the posts to carry the current. 
So what you're looking for is just pressing down this little thing, this little lip right here so that it slides past the plastic lip. Now I'm just gonna put them back in. Remember, I need to have the black on the right side, the red on the left side. And I wanna also make sure that I'm putting them on the right direction. So remember that the little part that clicks in is gonna go on the bottom so that the terminal rece receiver goes up. Now those are locked back into place. Now the two terminal sides match. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and plug this back in being really careful not to push too hard on the motherboard. Okay, that's clicked into place. As I'm getting ready to install this back on the back plate, I find it easier to just put these bolts back in. At least two or three of them. It doesn't matter if they're all in right this second. But what that allows me to do is center up this, this um, screen plate or this screen piece. And then I can just put this back on where it goes and at least start a couple of these little the nuts on there. That way I've got it in place and then I can work from there to put the rest of them on. Now I'll just hold the nut in the place on the back and tighten up each of these. Okay, let's go ahead and put it back into place. Just being careful as I do so to feed the wire down inside so the wire doesn't come back and push up into the fan as it spins. Okay, if you're getting that sound, that's the wire that's in the way. The wire is tripping the fan. Now that we've got it put back together, let's fire it up and see if we can see a noticeable difference in the decibel level with the hydraulic fan. Lend me your ears. That's it. Okay, so Curse Dragon 129. Curses to the dragon. Curses to small. Curses, Curses to the dragon small. I hope you'll notice that fan is running right now. My Snapmaker power module fan is running right now and I can barely hear it. It's made a huge difference. So it's changed from the sound of a vacuum cleaner going all the time to a light office conversation. Now let's take a listen to the filtration system and see what kind of decibels it's pulling out at low, medium, and high speeds. that we might have lowered the sound on the on the module, the power module, but if I'm going to run the fan, it's going to be loud and there's not a lot I can do about that. That's the purpose of the fan is to really pull a lot of air into and through that filtration system. But again, I'm not going to run the filtration system while I'm 3D printing per se, I don't have to. So if all I'm wishing to do is run the 3D printer, I've now dropped the decibel level down to something quite manageable and I'm really happy with it. So that's how you can lower the decibel level. I invite you to watch my next video where I'll show you how to start laser engraving with your Snapmaker 2. So let's get burning some stuff and see what we can do. Thanks again for watching and let's DIY with some confidence.